in the swing states that are, of course, critical to the election in 2012, they actually think that President Obama is far too soft on the bankers and has not done enough to help with housing. Fundamentally progressive positions. And they think the president is not progressive enough. Here are the facts to back this up. Has, uh, how do you feel about Obama's handling of the housing and mortgage crisis? In Arizona, only 30% approve, 54% disapprove. Florida, 36.50 against. Nevada, 34.54 against. North Carolina, 41.46. Pennsylvania, 38.48. All of those swing states saying President Obama has not done enough to help with the housing situation and with mortgage modifications, etc. President Obama has not been progressive enough, has not used the government enough. Okay, if you think that's unclear, well, let's go to independence. Now, remember, the whole point of President Obama going further and further right is to go and appeal to independence. That's the idea behind this. That's what the political geniuses in Washington think. So, well, what do independents think about uh, modifying mortgages and helping with the housing crisis? In Florida, they think that President Obama did not do enough by a 28 to 49 margin. That's gigantic. In uh, Arizona, it's 29 to 52. In Nevada, it is a shocking 21 to 70 of independents saying you didn't do enough. Not that you did too much with the government. Not that you did too much to help the middle class. You didn't do enough. Okay, if that's not clear enough, we go on to how should we treat Wall Street executives? Now, we treated them with kids' gloves, and President Obama got labeled a Maoist socialist anyway, saying, oh my God, how dare you once, once criticize them as fat cats? And try to do the tiniest little bit reform. Well, in fact, here's what the American people actually think. They think the result, uh, the, the mortgage crisis that we had was the result of, quote, criminal actions by Wall Street executives. How many people agree to that? All right, well, let's go to the numbers. In Florida, 69% say that yes, it was because of criminal actions by Wall Street executives. 77% in Nevada and Pennsylvania say criminal actions by Wall Street executives. <laughs> Why don't you run against Wall Street? How bad a politician are you? I mean, look at this, they're saying for the love of God, Go get Wall Street. Go help the middle class. Be progressive. And President Obama was like, I don't know. I mean, I'm going to do populist speeches and stuff, but I, I don't want to be too tough on the bankers. Here, you know what? Let me tell you what Jim Messina told a group of Wall Street fund, funders. And of course, it's not an accident. It's not because they're stupid. It's because they get money from Wall Street, right? And Jim Messina assured them, according to an insider at the meeting, this is a report from Business Week. Messina, who's running the campaign for Obama, said, we promise we're only going to go after Mitt Romney, but not the entire industry. Well, then you promise to give away the election by not being progressive enough and not being populist enough and not being presidential enough in representing the American people. All right, here's one more. Do you agree or disagree with the following statement? President Obama has not done enough to hold the banks accountable for their role in the housing collapse. See, now this one, again, is indisputable, right? If President Obama was too liberal and he held Wall Street too accountable and he was too populist, well, the American people would respond by saying, oh, no, no, boy, boy, he really, oof, that mouse really went after Wall Street. No, it's the exact opposite. In Pennsylvania, 63% say he has not done enough to hold banks accountable. North Carolina, 60%. Nevada, 69%. Florida, the critical state of Florida, 59%. Arizona, 65%. President Obama has not done enough to go after Wall Street. How obvious do they have to make it for you before you pay attention? This is going to decide the election. So I think Ari Berman wrote a terrific piece in The Nation saying, hey, you know what? You might want to run against Wall Street. <laughs> to which, of course, I say, of course, of course. But look at the numbers. He makes a compelling case because he says, look, look we, we, anybody who's paying attention and isn't brain dead knows that the country, not Washington, Washington loves Wall Street, right? But once you get outside the pundits and the television stations and, and, and everybody else in Washington, when you get to the actual American people, they can't stand Wall Street. They think they robbed us, literally. Their actions were criminal. And they're right, by the way. They're not wrong. 
And so that part we know. But he, Ari also makes a good point of, what are you doing this for anyway? You already lost the Wall Street donors. Last time around in 2008, President Obama had uh, raised $16 million from Wall Street. It was, they were their top, his top donors. So now you cater to those guys because you got paid by those guys. That's what's wrong with the system. I get it. That's true. That's what happened, right? But this time around, he's only gotten $3 million. And in fact, Mitt Romney has outraised them from Wall Street by a 10 to 1 margin. You've already lost those donors. When you did every favor you could imagine for them, you still lost them. So what are you still trying to cater them from? Cut the cord. Cut the cord and go on the attack. Not mildly. Don't go on the view and say, oh, Jamie Dimon is a brilliant banker. Oh, it's horrible politics and horrible policy. Put on your gloves or take off your gloves. Do whatever you got to do and attack for the love of Christ attack. 